Sorry. Hear us okay? Yeah, I can we're, hear you. We're kinda, oh, very we're good. We're kind of old people that don't know how to do stuff like this sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> how are you guys doing? Oh. Better that we see you now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to figure it out because I was I had to restart it and and then my both of my faces were popping. I was thinking, what is going on? You know, we were doing the same thing, so maybe you were restarting while we were restarting. Well, um, I have some some questions for you guys to answer. Sure. And um So when, what did you, how, like, how, like, what inspired you to start music? You want to go first? Um, I'll go first, I guess. I've, I've always loved music ever since I was a little girl. And um, my dad played guitar and I would sit at his feet and just listen to him play like old country, country music. This was in the early seventies and I just knew I always wanted to be a musician. I knew I always wanted to have something to do with music. But uh, my life had other other things in mind because my mom and my dad divorced. And then I had to help her raise my brother and sister who were younger than me. I was the oldest sibling. And I had to, I couldn't like join the band in school or anything, you know, because I had to get home to make sure they got off the bus and got their homework done and made dinner for them and all that stuff. So from like the time I was like seven till the time I was like 17, you know, I was busy doing that. And then I, then I met boys. <laughs> uh, we went off on another tangent for a while. <laughs> but uh, just, I just always loved music and my dad inspired me a lot. So that's probably it for me right now. Yeah. For me, it was family too. <laughs> Uh, my grandmother played piano and guitar and harmonica and she sang and it just looked like the most fun thing. She was pulling things out of the air and just playing them and you could mention a song that you'd heard and she could fake her way through it and if not, uh, you wouldn't know the difference. She had such confidence <laughs> just <laughs> barreling through playing it. Uh, you would think she always knew it. Yeah. And uh, she'd sit on the t at uh, watching the TV and write down something the singer sang. And then she'd go back to the piano and she'd be able to play it. So she was my hero. Whenever people were like, oh, who's your big influence? It's my grandma, you know? <laughs> <laughs> God bless, you know, God bless B.B. King and Elvis and all right, those guys. Yeah. But Lord, it's my grandma. They had a big part to play too, but that was later. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the first ones. <laughs> so like what's your, what's the most popular song you like to play when you when you do shows mm. you you go first i think people love the vivoni song because it's so funny i see their face when he says you know v-i-v-o-n-e and not it's not it's not vivon and it's not vivon my name don't rhyme with al capone i see people for the first time when they've heard that you know i've heard this song for a long time now but to them, it's like they're hearing it for the first time, and you just see their face is light up, and they think that's so funny. <laughs> they love that line, you know. I, I'm really touched that we get such strong responses out of material that we've come up with. It, written. yeah. You know, it, it's it's great yeah. to play a a cover that everyone likes, but you're kind of borrowing the goodwill from another artist. You know, it's kind of like, yeah. oh, yeah. we we love that song. Thank you for bringing that song. We appreciate <laughs> that song, too. But then to play something that they don't know that they're going to like because of, you know, the Vivoni song. We, we It's it's not on the playlist this summer yet, but we do the song Kung Pao Chicken. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got some other songs that, that folks know when they see us. I think they kind of expect it. And, you know. Just to be a little band like who we are, it's it's nice to be appreciated like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I love the Kansas City song. You yeah. guys do a good job on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the train um, jump the track. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Jay wrote the train. Train must have jumped I play, the track. I play it. I play it and play it. 
Yeah. Oh, I've written yeah. just play it and play it and play it. It's very <laughs> um, good. Well, maybe one day we'll get some live versions of it out there because live it's it's becoming a different beast every so often. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different if it's, it's a different yeah. train than it was before. Yeah. <laughs> we have we have a little bit of it on YouTube from um, Oh, that is right. from Westport Saloon, a live version of yeah. it when we had John in the band. Uh, and it uh, sounds pretty good. Yeah. But that place was kind of rowdy, so you hear a lot. Go, you hear a lot going what? on. <laughs> Did you ever go to Westport Saloon, Daniel? In Westport, I in a long time ago, long time ago. Yeah. They have that restaurant or whatever it's hooked up into it. Yeah. Oh, Good yeah. Food. Like a, oh yeah. I can't yeah. remember yeah. the name of it either. It's very, it's very like re retro kind of feel. Mm. Of like the sea how they're situated, right? Um, uh, let's see what else on here. <laughs> Do you guys have a favorite song you like to play, or like write? You like to write? Oh, we both love to write. Yeah, I'm doing a challenge right now where I'm we're supposed to write a song a month, and I wrote like a little little one four or five kind of little did i call them little ditties but i haven't really wrote a song yet but um i know what you might say his favorite song to play i think is right now. is my song hate to be wrong or maybe that's a favorite song that's of mine one of them. Yeah, yeah yeah he loves to play that song i like to play it too no i i'm you know i love being in a band with you i'm proud to play with you and i'm, I'm and i'm always excited to to see an audience not know that about you and be introduced to one of your songs. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then I, and then on top of that song, "Hate to Be Wrong," that I, what I like is when we introduce it to other musicians. That's always fun that they get in it because it's a little different. Mm -hmm. And then when they hear how easy it is, they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah." Uh -huh. It may not be the choice that you a, a, a regular radio trained songwriter would make and I think that's one of the reasons why I like what you do. And I think out of the box a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How much like, like so how many um how many <laughs> sorry. No no um, no go ahead. Uh, like how many how many um like when you started the band, how many people did you have before? The first incarnation of the Bats was at 07? 06. 06. It was just me and a drummer. And uh, I was really, I hadn't played in public in 10 years. And um, so I was very eager to do it and to get some songs out and some ideas out. And it was a great drummer. His name is Zach McCall. And um, so it was just a two-piece. And it was really a, a, a challenge to come back after not playing that much to, to, to play with just another person and, and, and play as intensely. And then I was playing new tunings and things like that before. So from a two-piece. And then Zach left. And I had kind of a side band, so I brought all of those guys in. So that was five. We grew up to seven pieces, and now we're at four. Wow. Four is a lot more comfortable schedule-wise. But there's something about coming in with seven bandmates where you it's like your little gang <laughs> that takes over the the, the, the place. Just, yeah. You know, that's kind of nice. Then, then you yeah. can delegate. So-and-so are, are doing sound. They're getting the tip jar together. You're getting the merch together. You're writing the set list. You know, so to have a big group and everybody with the same objective is really, really helpful and really powerful. However, sometimes you outnumber an audience. <laughs> you know, that's going to happen too. It didn't happen as much as a two man, but uh, seven pieces it could happen. Who would you want to go on tour with if you have the chance to? Wow. I'm a big Lucinda Williams fan. Either her or Patti Smith. 
Yeah, the Billy Bats open and for Patty Smith. You'd like them. I think that would be really cool. <laughs> I'm gonna go a little more fantastical. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have us go back in time and uh we would be touring with uh with my old friend Hubert Sumlin. That would be oh. that would be what I wish we could do. Oh, that's really I, sweet. I think he would be a lot of fun. Um I think he'd kick our butts every night, but <laughs> that's who I would say. That's a good answer, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so who would who do you like to play when you're in when you're in Kansas City? Like local bands in, in the city. Do you have any favorites? Uh, we like Noah Davis mm -hmm. a lot. I don't know what he's calling his band now. It's changed. A heavy couple electric. Times. Heavy electric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Davis with the heavy electric. Yeah. Uh, we just caught the accumulators last week. Yeah. And the old crows. And the old crows. There's a lot of bands that we like. Um, Katie Gian. I always enjoy Katie Gian. Um, our friend Martha's band. The uh, the ain't misbehavings. Oh yeah, the ain't misbehavings. Yeah. You know. Um, we're so rich in bands right now. Um, it's really a good time for music. And gosh, there's Andy Albano. Yeah. Um, you know, we, I, I don't know. I don't know where to start or where to stop. Both. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> for all the folks that we like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kansas City has a lot going on all the time. We're rich with it. Yeah. You know? You throw a rock, you're going to hit a talented musician here. You know, mm -hmm. just yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. who are we? Who are we I mean, Kansas City is a popular place. Mm. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, we really like the Great music. Uh, the Yellow Bird. We met her. That oh my night, gosh! And, and Lucas, we really like Lucas. Yeah, that, that, that <laughs> we were introduced were to really, through you. Yeah, they're really cool yeah. people. They're yeah. Damien Dunn. Yeah, we we knew him already. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. knew him back into the old days. Yeah. Yeah. Right back then. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. He's he's a, he's a popular dude. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just realized you can see like my whole office oh. back there. Oh, it's yeah. a mess. It you is a mess. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> <Don't go. laughs> so there's that there's that <laughs> couch thing up on its side. <laughs> You, Daniel, you've been so nice to not say anything. <laughs> what else? That's a part of the piano oh, that's well, I, been I, taken apart. Uh, oh. you, yeah, if you're liking it a little bit, you might see our cat it, climb that couch. Yeah, our cat climbs the couch. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's scary. I'll give guitar yeah. lessons here and then here. <laughs> and like then she sits on the top oh, of the thing. Oh. Like a gargoyle and peers down. Oh. Um, you know, and then I'm used to her. Well, and then the person I'm giving them. guitar lessons are like, is that a cat back behind you? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. What else is over there? Oh, there's your poster. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, don't show that side. This, this is better. Well, well, this is all my kitchen. So it's oh, okay. Nothing uh, fantastic. What's your sign, rock and roll? What is that? Over your doorway? And, uh, it says um, rock and roll, um, uh, like it's a street sign. Oh, oh like cool. rock and roll drive, rock and roll road. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. My mom just picked it out out of it when I guess they were. She was getting just random stuff from random houses that were selling stuff yeah. inside of it. Then she found it and she said, "Oh, yeah, I feel like this." Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, but on the other side, there's just a lot of um, photos of all different um, famous people on my walls. Up on the wall, <laughs> I'm I'm moving my head like I think I yeah. can see yeah. around. I don't know why I'm doing. <laughs> I go out of off the screen when I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I just crane my they head. Get, you got the. There might you be got, a picture of you um, on the wall. <laughs> The, there's um, Alicia Salambrino Sol on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I hope it's then, not really her. Um, I hope it's just a picture of her. Oh. <laughs> well, it's a magazine. It's oh, just okay. a thing in the magazine. I'm sure she just had like a little bird perch, and she was just sitting there. It was really Very her. silly. But 
I don't know who that is. Who is that? Uh, beautiful Bobby. She. Uh, okay. Yeah. She. Yeah. She. Now she lives in um, LA. Oh, yeah. wow. And she's still. She's, try, she's trying to work, trying to come out with a, a, sing, a solo album. Because mm -hmm. she doesn't have the band anymore. Right. But, um, who is your influences? Can you go first? Yeah. Um, Jeff Buckley. Um, there was a time that, like, I lived, breathed, and ate him. Not literally, but, you know, it was just, like, all I, all I could think about every day, trying to read about him. I was so sad when he died. Um, bought all the music that I could and everything, read everything I could about him. Tried to learn everything I could about him. I felt like I was on a, I felt like he was going to teach me who, who I needed to be or get me where I needed to be as far as music goes. Felt like I could learn a lesson from him dying so young that I needed to get, get on the ball with this because, you know, you're not promised tomorrow. So, True. but, uh, he, he's, him, re he's uh, really good. He is amazing. So amazing. Yeah. I, ne I never got to see him, but I remember hearing him on Kansas city radio in like 1996, they would play, um, uh, grace and they played, uh, Oh, what's the hard hitting one? I see now. I don't listen to him as much anymore. But they they would they play two songs, yeah. two songs by Eternal Life, Eternal Life, yeah, and yeah, it was so cool. It was so cool to hear him on the radio back then. I did I I did a um a benefit concert for him in Kansas City a oh, couple really? a while back ago. Oh wow! I didn't yeah. know that. That's cool. His songs. I, I are guess. Sound. I mean, somebody contacted me and asked me if I would book, uh, get a show together and sure. get bands together to play his. And then it happened. And then wow, who who played and it? And then along along, um, a lot of and and uh Anna Cole or something. Her name is. She has red hair. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um. Uh, and Brave Fellow, uh, and some other solo artists. What was the venue, Daniel, where you did that? But, oh, it's the Czar Bar. Oh, wow. yeah. It used to be a bank. Place. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good place. I used to like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a very, really cool. I like that one, that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that the one that has the bank balled up on the stage that we played at? Uh, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, it was a long time ago. We played there. Yeah. Um, for me, for influences, I would say like um, those first, the first couple bands I was in, I had some great, great friends that um, were always turning me on to music and and. Uh, uh, different styles of music and things and and so you know once again I, I i think i could say someone more hallowed or more more famous but really uh, some of the people who opened up my taste and had faith in my abilities were probably the the, the biggest influence to tell you the truth i had a friend scott eggeman uh darren baker we called him the beast and uh don godwin they were my first band back in my hometown when I was a kid, and all three of them are still doing things with music. And a matter of fact, Darren will be drumming uh, with me at the Cigar Box Guitar Festival in uh, June fifteenth in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's crazy to have a relationship that started before you knew how to drive when you were learning to play your instruments together, and that person is still available, and you can still see uh, the developments and the interest that he's made musically, and then. How they line up with you or how they don't you know uh, uh yeah yeah that's been a great communication um, 
let's see what I have on here. Uh -huh. um, do you guys have any like shows coming up? We do. Mm -hmm. I can grab the dates actually. <laughs> We've got it's the first one, Legacy Park. Yeah, well, um, oh, no, it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's it's Volker so Park. I'm guesting with some friends Sunday night at Christine's Firehouse, uh, the 21st. Christine's is uh, has a jam every Sunday night. Uh, um, um, Dave Hayes and Daniel Montero host it, and I'll be in with them this Sunday, the 21st. It starts at seven. So, any musician, feel free and come play. Now, I want to make sure you get the the dates right. You're right, uh, June 4th. Sunday, uh, we're at Volker Park, Volker Park, also yeah. known as Theus Park, this new uh, monthly music in the park festival that, yeah. that um, they're doing. We'll be there with um, the Wind Up Merchants mm -hmm. and Black Ca Black Crack Review. Um, then uh, June the 10th, we're at Legacy Park at Lee Summit. Yeah, it starts at 7 o'clock. starts at 7 it's free. Both of those are free. Both of those festivals are free. And then we're back at uh, uh, Woodyard Barbecue the 24th of June. And what do we have? July 22nd, we're back at Woodyard. And somewhere we've got a date with um, Nirvana Coffee House. I'll have to look that up make sure and get that right but no we've got we, we've got some nice gigs coming up some big things and then some fun little coffee house things yeah it's nice to do the intimate things as yeah. well it's you love the big stage but it's really great you can yeah. actually feel a connection when yeah. somebody's just 10 feet from you yeah you know. do you guys have a favorite venue in kansas city you like to play at well, we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did, but it, it went away. It was Coda. Did you ever hear about Coda, Daniel? On Broadway, yeah, I have, but I have not, never, never, never been to it. Yeah, we played there for about I, a like, dec decade, was... right? We played there about 10 years. And then it went goodbye, and yeah. we still cry, and we're still sad, and yeah. we've never had a place where we felt like we were so beloved and we could do no wrong and we held held the audience captive and it was just so fun. We learned I learned so much there. Yeah. Met made so many friends and it was really where I started to kind of play out in Kansas City because I was more of an independence girl. So that was neat for me to experience that being out on the east side, you know. Get to go down on the west side. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and <laughs> it's it's nice to let a venue let yourself be a different band at a different venue. You know, a different venues will have different challenges yeah. with yeah. spotlight, uh, 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 sight lines, audio, uh, seating. It, they they could do things later. They could do things uh, earlier. Um, but whatever the venue has to offer you um that it's okay that if you're a slightly different band uh, adapting to the to the vessel that you're in mm -hmm. um and that's fun you know and maybe maybe in this one venue you're 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 really close you're physically close to everybody on the stage and then you feel like oh okay well we can really open up here we can really take some chances you know and maybe in the other stages you're cleaner yeah. and things just feel more professional more um, on big stages you feel so far apart from your band that's yeah it's kind of a weird yeah. feeling you know yeah. you got your 10 feet over there and then just over the, you know. you think about how cramped you could be in a in a small venue mm -hmm. and then suddenly you've got this huge proscenium yeah you know and we're gonna know about that here in a couple of weeks that's true <laughs> that's true <laughs> Well, I'm thinking of doing another benefit concert for Save the Music Foundation. Nice. So hopefully that happens happens next year or sometime in the fall or something. Mm -hmm. Well, keep us in mind. If, if I mean, I love. Out, we'd love to. 
Yeah. Uh, all right. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Do you like your music? Well, <laughs> if you're interested, music. yeah. We know a band. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Like any. I wanted to ask you about your cookies. Can you can you tell me about that? <laughs> you have a baking baking company, a baking cookies company. Yeah, yeah, I, That's I, awesome. yeah, yeah. Oh wait, I, I need to hear about this too. <laughs> no, no, you please. Don't know about this? No, no, I don't know this. <laughs> I love cookies. Yeah, no. Um, let's get I, let's well, get to the meat I, of the interview now. Um, Come on. I I mean I like baking. Um, I kind of started. Uh, when I was in college and then I grew out of my apartment because every like all the students wanted uh, cookies when they were studying. <laughs> right. So I was thinking, oh maybe I should sell should sell cookies to the students. And so uh, mostly with it they would come to my apartment and um I also made like five hundred cookies for um a, 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 my campus for a um my church um, group I was a part of. Um, then we gave them all out to students when they were doing the testing. Oh yeah. For the finals. So that was cool. Um, so did you always bake? <laughs> did yeah. you did you yeah. bake as a kid too, or? Uh, I would not really, but I mean, I kind of. Kind of, I guess I just had the, I mean, I liked making stuff. So I was thinking, well, yeah. I guess I should start something. And then it <laughs> kind of, I just, I learned from the internet. So that's yeah. how I, I mean, watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> and, yeah. um, so, I mean, um, getting good deals and like what kind of stuff to make. And then uh -huh. I did before I did was I made cakes for people and I made cakes for my friends, kids, birthdays and oh, um, wow. made cakes for my sister's birthdays. And then I kind of um, did that. And then I started, I took a class at jo Joanne's Fabrics to start uh -huh. the first how to decorate cookies and then then i guess it could talk after that <laughs> i don't know but yeah i i mean i get um i make a lot of cookies i, I try to make a lot of cookies i mean uh, I, not a lot of people order them but i mean i do make them yeah paul is a good people i am not them. I'm not a good baker. Paula, Paula can bake. Yeah. I just have no faith that it sits in the oven that I'm like, I have to check it every 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, probably now. You know, that kind of thing. Or I forget about it. Or I just forget and run to the store and stuff that's in the, oh, in the oven. I'm awful with, I shouldn't <laughs> bake. Well, I might well on this side is all my um, baking. All right. You sit in your kitchen? I do make a lot of yeah, you can. I don't know if you can see the the oh. kitchen aid. Oh wow, nice! I wish I had one of those. That's cool. Big shelves. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. 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 I want to order some um, from you in the future. Do you make good right, chocolate? Right. Do you make good chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and peanut yeah. butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make a lot of different kinds of cookies. A lot of people like the um, oatmeal raisin because I mm. put all the all the stuff in the, in that. Um, but I mean, I make I have a lot of different kind of cookies I like to make, and I post them on my on my Instagram or like on my website. I'd post them to my yeah. stomach. <laughs> oh. 
but yeah, I like to. I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a creative person. I like to do everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep me, Absolutely. keep me going. Mm -hmm. Did we first meet you at Main Street well, Coffee House? Is that where we first met you, Daniel? In Independence, up on the square. I do not know. <laughs> You don't know. I think that's where I first. Do you know the it. place? Do you know where she's I, talking about there? I uh, maybe. Okay. Where where's the square at? Independence. <laughs> oh. Well. I don't know. It's been uh, a while. Fair I enough. think maybe maybe. Um, but maybe I just heard your name from other people. Okay. Could be. But I you guys know, are good. You, you and I have been Facebook friends for a while. You long guys time. rock the house. <laughs> I guess you, you rock the house down. We were ready to go. <laughs> we were ready to play and sing and scream and. Yeah, COVID. We felt like we were shut up for a long time. Yeah. And it's some aggression to let out. I like it that it looks like I'm an um, I'm an elf compared to you. I look, <laughs> I look like I could be your son. <laughs> Hi, little <Hey>. baby. <laughs> like I'm gonna get smaller to just really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's so silly. Well, well hopefully you don't I look fall up down. to you, Paula. <laughs> Um, well, um, well, it was good chatting with you guys. It was good. It was fun to talk with you too. Thank you. <laughs> I should really sit up though. Oh, oh I want to ask you, how is your, how, I just want to ask you, how is your radio show on, oh. on, um, on uh, KKFI? Yeah, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going well. I'm there weekly Thursdays, three to six. And we play uh, uh, classic blues and uh, um, stuff that you're, I, I just want to pull stuff off the wall and show you. Oh, we play this. <laughs> we play that. Um, every week we'll try to play Buddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf, and then we'll move forward in time to where uh, blues and R&B turns into soul, turning into funk to James Brown and play New Orleans music, music from uh, Stax Records. Uh, listen to slow blues, listen to uh, uh, early rock and roll that was black music before it was called rock and roll and became white music. <laughs> um, but it's a lot of fun. I enjoy yeah. it. I enjoy the friendships that, that I've made from it. And as a kid, I was fortunate enough to meet some of the older artists or people who, who had uh, uh, been in their bands. And so uh, I really felt like I... I uh, get to turn people on to stuff that I love, you know, and stuff that I'm still learning about it means mm -hmm. a lot to me. So thanks for asking. Well, yeah. It's kind of cool that you have a, a radio show. Well, a radio show. Now you're, you're on my, on my show. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This, uh, I started when I was 17. So 1988 was my first radio stuff and uh december of 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 88 and did it for i don't know six eight months went to college didn't think i would do it again and then coincidentally the person who had hired me in my hometown had moved to the town i went to college and was working at a station and hired me there and so I did that and then came up here to Kansas City. I worked smooth jazz. I was there at that station for a little bit. And now I'm at KKFI. And at KKFI, I get to choose what I play instead of playing the um, adult contemporary music or the, the old classic rock uh, <laughs> back in the old days. Now, now, the, now these classic rock, well, they would be ancient rock, yeah, uh, right. I guess now. Classic rock is like a U2 now. Right. Like, ah. Classic rock is 90s now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, right. Yeah, because I, I did, I when I, because when I went to Delaware, I went to for a two year program and out there. And then 
I wanted to do radio and I got the opportunity to be there for three, about three years to mm -hmm. be on the radio. And that was nice and went to the basement and then, and then grew to FM for a nice. little bit. And that was fun. And then was that through the university? I came back home. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. That was fun. I mean, they got my name out there. And then uh, my, the, the person that was in charge of the radio station, he gave me a, the opportunity to do it again when I was here in Kansas City mm -hmm. through COVID. So I got more experience of yeah. doing, being on the radio. And they just put it, put it out, uh, out on on college on the road or whatever you could listen to it uh-huh that was fun no it's a great it's a great medium you know uh -huh. it's a good opportunity and meeting Absolutely. people and, yeah well um, i'll let you guys go Okay. And, um, thank you so much for for um, taking the time out of your day to do this with me. Thank you for the visit. It's been nice talking to you. Thank you, Daniel. You uh -huh. too. You're sorry, welcome. We were, sorry, we were I'll a little late. I'll let you know late. when this is. Oh, uh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay. I'm not doing anything tonight. Okay. <laughs> 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 Um, All right. Well, talk to you guys later. I'll let you know when this is this is up. Okay. And, and, um, on. Okay. Bye, Daniel. Everything. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. See ya. Bye. 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 See ya.